you know, it's been over a week and a half since we've done Seven Days Podcast, and I, I feel like I owe it to you guys to do it since I haven't done it last week. So we're going to talk about what happened at Roblox moving forward to this week, and there's a lot of stuff that happened this week, so without further ado, let's begin the Seven Days Podcast. God. Okay, so Roadblock. 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 Now, everybody was sour on it. A lot of people were sour on Roadblock. And, you know, there was just butthurt. You know how it was a crappy show. It was basically a Monday Night Raw on a Sunday night. And I do agree with them on that. No, it's just that for me, I enjoyed half of it. I enjoyed half of the show. I did not enjoy. I did not enjoy the entire show. Just half of it. I did like Cesaro and Sheamus winning the tag team titles. I did like Sami Zayn and Braun Strowman match. I did like uh, the cruiserweights and the never coming back. And you know, when it got to set, when it got to Seth Rollins a little, that's when it started to fade away a little bit. But then when it got to Sasha and Charlotte, I I was like, you know what? Okay, so Sasha and Charlotte are coming up next. The uh, there's a video package, so I have about 33 to 34 minutes of bath time to go relax and not watch this damn match because I'm not watching this match because I just can't take this shit anymore, you know. And I figured, you know what? I thought this would probably work. I had a theory. I had a theory where. I would beg, I would beg for another title change, and this time I won't get a title change because every time I say no, I do not want a title change. Stop changing the titles, you know. Stop having Sasha win at one place, then Charlotte wins on pay per view, and then again and again, rinse and repeat. So I'm like, you know what? Finally, you know what? I'm just gonna be like, I'm just gonna be like, fuck it. I want. A title change. Let's see what happens now. I still got a fucking title change. I was bathing. I'm all, I just I picked up my phone. All I had to do was see one tweet, one tweet from JD from New York 206. Right? I follow him on Twitter. I got the second I saw a notify. I got a notification of him tweeting saying Sasha Banks couldn't last. Three seconds without tapping, and then I realized, okay, Charlotte won right there. And then I went to check in case I'm wrong. I was right. Charlotte won the title for the fourth freaking time. Fourth time. Fourth time. Okay. Fourth time. Fourth time. Fourth time. How you like that now? You feel good? You feel good? Hmm? Four times. Four. Four times. The title has changed hands. Six to seven times. Six to seven times. But they've, they've been feuding. Here's the thing. You see, I'm still right what I said. They've been feuding since Sasha came back at the Royal Rumble back in January. But having one-on-one matches, it did start back in July 25th on the new era of Monday Night Raw. And ever since then, if you guys heard, Michael Cole said it either on Raw or at Roblox, every time Sasha and Charlotte fight one-on-one, the title has changed hands. So, seven times they fought, seven times the title has changed hands. Starting from Sasha, then the Charlotte SummerSlam, then the Sasha on Raw after Clash of Champions, to fucking, uh, to fucking, uh, Hell in the Cell, first, 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 first women's Hell in the Cell, first main event, it's on pay-per-view. 
And then, then after that, Monday Night Raw in Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina. And then, Roblox, end of the line. I am glad it's the end of the fucking line of this fucking feud. But guess what? Now we're on to Charlotte and Bailey. Yay! We're gonna go through this again. So, are they gonna do what they did with Sasha now and make Charlotte an eighth time champion? Is that what they're gonna do now? Eight times? Huh? Bailey's gonna win it four times, and then ba and then Charlotte's gonna win eight times. Yeah, I I'm, I'm gonna predict that. Let's see. At the Royal Rumble, Charlotte is gonna is gonna win. And then maybe on Monday Night Raw episode, then Bader's gonna win. And then Charlotte wins it back at Fastlane. Because Elimination Chamber pay-per-view is a SmackDown exclusive. So Fastlane goes to Monday Night Raw. So there you go. Bruh. I, the women's division on Monday Night Raw is, is death to me. It's death. Okay? The women's division on Monday nights is fucking... Death. I can't sit here and lie to you people, okay? I cannot sit here and lie to you people. And, and you know what? I have a comment on my cha on my channel. I'm gonna read to you guys. You're not gonna see it, but I am gonna read to you guys on uh, uh, someone uh, uh, someone leaving a comment. I don't know if it's still here. All right, still here. All right, I'm gonna read it, and then. Uh, and then I want you guys to, to, to give me your thoughts, okay? Now, a, a person named uh, Harry1017, uh, okay? Um, says, quote, You know, during the Attitude Era, my dad used to see Stone Cold punching people in the face and said, Oh, that's cool. And continued to watch and enjoy. Now he sees Kevin Owens giving Tip Baby Jericho presents and friendship speeches and says, You're way too old to be watching this It's a Little Kid show. Do you, do you, and then he, in all caps, do you see what I mean? No casual fans flicking through their channels are going to see this friendship bullshit and say, Man, I have a, I have to tune in to, to watch this next week. They'll fucking change the channel and call it gay. The only good wrestlers in WWE are Roman Reigns, John Cena, Brock Lesnar, and Baron Corbin. That's it. No one else is good. I don't want to see WWE, which it used to be an awesome show, turn into a shit show cause gay indie wrestlers like gay J Styles and Sami Zayn fucking hell and the smarks think wrestling is currently better than it's ever been if you think WWE is good today go kill yourself and go rape your indie wrestlers and jump off uh, floor 12 I'm sick of these retards ruining WWE and make it gay and childish the man children are making wwe gay this guy has a infatuation with the word gay and and they that, that's just me saying uh and quote and they think it's good this may not be politically correct which i don't mind if you're not politically correct because i don't give a fuck if you got something to say just say it but anyone who disagrees with me this is what he says is wrong Anyone who doesn't have my opinion is a retarded. Stop watching wrestling and go watch My Little Pony. And then he adds on what I said about Roman Reigns being number one contender for the world title on Raw again. Also, your dumb complaint as to why Reigns shouldn't get a, a title shot is retarded. Reigns only lost due to disqualification, so kayfabe wise, Reigns lost unfairly, so deserves a rematch. Also, please tell me who. who who else you think on Raw should face Owen? Reigns and Rollins are the only main event faces on Raw. Please tell me who else should face Owens other than Reigns. 
There is no one else the brand split blows. Huh. That was a lot to read. But he's basically saying that smart marks are ruining shit for fans like him. And he, he had to use the attitude air thing again. Every time. I swear it happens every time. You gotta bring up. In any conversation, you gotta bring up the attitude there. You, you just gotta. Oh, the ad today, you know, it was cool, you know, when, when you see Stone Cold beat up someone, you're like, oh shit, that's cool, but then when you watch today's product, you're like, what the fuck is this shit, this is for kids. Um, honestly, I'm gonna be honest, I will never stop watching Monday Night Raw, no matter how bad it is. I, I mean, I complain just because, just for the sake of it, because I complain because there's, there's stuff I, I just don't like, and I, and I just want to give you guys my opinion about it. But then, I, I but then again, like I always said, I'm always hyped for Monday Night Raw, not SmackDown. We see SmackDown, I was like, okay, it's got another show to watch, you know. I'm not gonna miss it, you know. I've been watching SmackDown since 2009. Uh, there was a point where I actually gave up watching SmackDown a little bit, but then I'm like, you know what? It's on. I, I feel like watching wrestling, so let me watch SmackDown. And then I got hooked up again. So, and that was when the that was in the tape days. So, he's saying that, you know, today's WWE uh, stuff is childish. 2009 was childish as fuck in my eyes, but I still would take 2009 than today's product. But, um, he's saying how Reigns, Cena, Lesnar, and Corbin are the best, are only good. Cena, I would say, okay, because he has improved. Reigns is predictable as fuck. Like, he's more predictable than Cena at times. Lesnar is the most predictable guy right now in the WWE and Corbin I'll agree with that Corbin is a great wrestler, but um Yeah, and uh, and then You know him using the word gay so many times. I mean Okay, I get it. it, it it's it's childish, but you got to use the word gay so many times like really I mean I'm not offended. It's just like think of other words than the word gay like I like seriously, like, like when you guys heard me read this guy's statement, you hear me say the word "gay" so many times. Like I'm not, but if I would, if I could, I would show you the fucking comment here. But um, yeah, this guy just has a problem, and then uh, my statement about Reigns getting another title shot. Yeah, sure, he got screwed over, but think about Daniel Bryan in 2013 he got fucked by Shawn Michaels and Hell in the Cell he never got a rematch for the WWE title we got Big Show versus Randy Orton for the WWE title Survivor Series we didn't get a Randy Orton versus Daniel Bryan match no after that no we didn't get shit so I don't know what the fuck this guy's coming at me saying how he got screwed unfairly you know I mean it, it's in the rules Jericho Attacked Owens, which benefited Reigns because he didn't get attacked. So Reigns is disqualified. It makes sense. So I don't know. And, and Foley, a guy that I can't take serious as a fucking GM, you know. Uh, Reigns is gonna get another title shot right here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, even though we're in Columbus, Ohio. Yay. So I don't know. Monday Night Raw, the Shark Tank. Uh, like I said, Raw had positives, and I'm not gonna lie, back on Roblox real quick, the main event was boring as shit, headlock after, like, just me remembering the match, I'm tired already, Head, headlock after headlock after headlock, and then Roman Reigns with his predictable moves, and then after Jericho just interferes, and then the match ends, up. I really hate when the main event match on the pay-per-view ends in disqualification i really do it's like why i don't give a fuck if the paper you is that shitty why do you gotta end it in, the, in dq let give me a, a definitive finish like seriously i why and then Monday night rob the next night Shazar, like new day losing the belts was a positive for my eyes right yeah sure now everybody's trying to say oh new day should have Kept the titles, have fun with it, you know, fucking, you know, let build up a new tag team. I do agree with that, but now you say that shit after they fucking lost the belt? Really? Um, but anyways, 
I, uh, Cesaro and Sheamus winning the belts, positive. Sami Zayn and Braun Strowman was a positive. The Cruiserweights was a positive. Never coming back, turning heel was a positive. Everything else, Ron versus Jericho, negative. Sasha versus Charlotte, oh, again! Big ass negative. And the main event was a negative, so. Obviously, the positives are being outdone by the negatives. And Monday Night Raw, no, nothing different. I mean, I love when Enzo Moore was in that sensitive therapy session. And, and, and like, Enzo was just being, Enzo was, was, was just being fun to me. And also... You know, Cesaro and Sheamus look good with the tag team belts. Like, I don't like the... F I, I would rather have it with gold. Like, red strap with gold on it. That would be great. But... Uh, but, like, yeah. With them with red and silver? I mean... Can they not do anything? Can they do anything creative, for God's sakes? I mean... Why can't it be red and gold? And then SmackDown keeps the, the silver and blue. Like, I, I, I don't get it. The tag belts f on SmackDown fit well because SmackDown is more like a white and blue based color. And Raw is, in a way, red and black, but you can add a little gold in it. So why couldn't they do that? This is what I said. When I get back on Universe Mode, and by the way... I will be by next week, by next weekend, by New Year's weekend, I will be getting back on Universe Mode, hopefully, and, and, um, when I do get back on it and I start working on it, I will be having, like I said, every championship will not look the same. Now, the Intercontinental and the United States title, I might have to change those. I mean, the, the, the United States title, I do like the design, but the strap is, like, not black. It's, like, grayish, so I might have to change that. But, you know, the Intercontinental title, I'm, I'm thinking about either keeping the, the same old, you know, the white belt, the white old classic Intercontinental title, or bring back the attitude there Intercontinental title. I don't know what to do, but besides that... You know, Universal title, I'm going to change that for sure. You know, I'm not going to keep that championship that Roman Reigns won on that episode of Raw in Universe mode. I'm going to change that to, I don't know, I'm going to have to customize it in a way where I'm going to love it. And then you guys are going to like it too. But besides the point, yeah, they, they need to be creative with their titles. I mean, when SmackDown... Tag team titles came out. I'm like, okay, they look good. I, you know, blue and silver looks nice. You know, but when, when Raw did it, it's like, come on, really? Like, uh, the Universal title is the same. The tag belts are the same. The women's titles are the same. If the mid card titles change, I swear to God, I don't know what WWE is doing. I, I really don't. I really don't. You know, SmackDown was a good show this week. Um, SmackDown, uh, as usual, the better show of the week. Um, my my two highlights of SmackDown in my eyes. I mean, the main event was a good thing, you know, and the opening segment, you know, uh, AJ Styles burying James Ellsworth. Also, Dolph Ziggler and uh, Baron Corbin. Jesus, the way how Corbin caught Ziggler with that with the end of days was just beautiful. But, in the end, the main two focus of SmackDown that nobody will ever forget this week. Renee Young in The Miz and Natalya Nikki Bella. When Natalya kept calling Nikki Bella a bitch, it will, I have it saved on my Twitter. Like, I retweeted it and like liked it to keep it still on my, on my Twitter. So, I don't have to search in WWE's fucking... Twitter account to find it, but Jesus Christ, Natalia went in on Nikki Bella, and I don't want to make this joke because it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a fucking uh, immature joke, but I have to say it, 
Natalia went more in than John Cena himself. I'm on Nikki Bella. I'm sorry. That 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 is a fact. Natalia went in harder than John Cena himself on Nikki Bella because Natalia basically says, "Look, bitch, you've been here for years. I trained you. You got all the the spotlight, the glitz and the glamour, all the." All the positivity from the from the fans of your success. It should have been me, all right. And now, all right, you're coming on here acting like you're this big shot, but yet in reality, you're nothing. You may look good in and out, but in the end, you're nothing. You have no charisma, no freaking. You have no personality. My cats have more personality than you. Okay. Yeah, bitch. Like, you know, and then Natalia's nail in the coffin. I said it on the review on SmackDown. And then when, when Natalia says this, I swear to God, this, this make me want to, like, love Natalia so much right now. Natalia says, quote, You have no charisma, no personality. You may look good in the outside, you may look, you may look good in the inside, but in the, end, but in the end, you're still nothing. And that's why John will never marry you. And we all know how bad Nikki wants to marry John Cena. And ah, uh, oh shit, <laughs> I just can't. You gotta watch the clip to know what I'm talking about. Jesus Christ, man. And then Renee Young and the Miss, the, Renee was like, we want, uh, asking the Miss a simple question. Miss, what, are you, uh, what do you have to say about your obsession with Dean Ambrose? And the Miss was like, my obsession? My obsession with Dean Ambrose? How about we talk about your obsession with Dean Ambrose? And I'm like, oh shit, they're actually gonna say this? I mean, I mean, we all know Renee Young and Dean Ambrose are dating, but we, we gonna bring this shit up? What? Word? And then, and then it's like, after all, you're the one that's sleeping with them. I'm like, oh my god. Oh no, but like, Renee Young, not Renee Young. Out of all people, you could have sent in that new chick, Dasha, whatever the fuck her name is, that called James Ellsworth, James Ellis. You, you could have called her. But you gotta do that to Renee Young. I was like, oh no. And then Renee Young slapped the A list, slapped the piss out of the miss. Jesus Christ. I can't wait for next week. I was scared for talking smack that Miss and Marisa are gonna show up and then try to attack Renee Young, like, you know, go at her verbally and stuff. You know, I'm really bored right now. Let's talk about some wrestling news. Billy Gunn wants to return to WWE. Triple H told him when he was hired as coach. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Okay, so Billy Gunn on returning to WWE. Saying, of course I would. I love coaching. That is my thing. I love teaching people that want to learn this business. I would go back in a minute if asked. Coaching was such a different avenue for me, and I didn't think I had it in me when. The game Triple H, uh, Paul Levesque, hired, hired me. He goes, you can't be the one, you can't be one the boys, but you can't be one the boys, and we've got to trial run to see if you'll be a good coach. So Billy Gunn basically saying he want, he would want to go back as a coach, but apparently he's, he had an offer from New Japan, so... I mean, I guess that's cool. Like, I, I guess. I don't know. I'm just really new at this point. Monday Night Raw rating uh, up? Raw rating up? Are you fucking serious? Bullshit. Bullshit. The final rating for Monday Night Raw this past Monday Night was, oh, 2 million and 2. This is sad. This is sad. You want to know why this is sad? Because 2009 was the most childish time 
to be a WWE fan. And I'm saying that, and I love 2009 with all of my heart. I was, I'm, I'm currently going back and watch everything from fucking Ozzy Osbourne to fucking Chris Master doing the titty bump. Everything. Everything. In 2009, I enjoy more than today's fucking product. The fact that, it, I mean, at least 2009's product was 3 million. Every Raw was 3 million. This year, we're slipping into the one. Th listen to this. The final rating for Monday Night Raw was 2.2, right? Up from last week's 1.93 rating. Wow. Wow. So Zack Ryder, uh, also on his uh, update, despite having knee surgery one week ago and being out of action for several months, which sucks for Zack Ryder, S Zack Ryder seems to be in good spirits as he's visiting Disney this week. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's on crutches. That really sucks, man. You really worked your ass off. You finally got something going on in your career, and then in a blink of an eye, you're, you're just knocked off your pedestal. It really sucks. We got like a couple of minutes left. I'm just reading news at this point. Triple H on Bobby Roode versus Shinsuke Nakamura. WWE star turns 33 and Brie Bella. I'm not going to give a fuck about Brie Bella and her baby. All I know is she's pregnant. I'm happy for her. You know, she's not in the fucking ring doing Daniel Bryan moves, which made me hate her so much. You know. And when she was retiring, when she retired, when I heard the news she was retiring, I was shocked. I'm not going to lie. And I was like, I was kind of like a little bit subtle. I was a little bit nice saying how, you know, I just hated her because she just, she's just doing things that I don't want to see from, like, if I want to see Daniel Bryan moves, I want to see Daniel Bryan do it himself. Like, you guys know what I mean. I mean, okay, so Brie Bella gives Baby Watch update, uh, 21 weeks. Fuck their YouTube channel, but if you want to go watch it, go watch it anyways. I'm not stopping you. I can't stop you anyway. Raw superstar Luke Gallows turns 30, 33. Man, this guy's young. Holy shit. And then Triple H tweeted the following on NXT champion Nakamura versus Bobby Roode at NXT TakeOver San Antonio. Wow. He's like, yeah, oh, it will be hashtag... Glorious. Wow. Just wow. See, I'm just reading news at this point. But, um, I would. Uh, Billy Gunn being coach. I want to see Billy Gunn again. I've been watching a lot of stuff back then, and a lot of. I, I, I see a lot of Billy Gunn. It's like, ah, sad that. I mean, it sucks that he got fired. But then again, he got fired for the right reason. You know, he, he, he was under some some drug or something to where he would get fucked up to, to where he would look all big and shit cuz I'm like why is Billy Gunn looking so active like does he train like if you look back on when DX interfered in Triple H and Sting match who was the first one ripping it to the ring it was Billy Gunn if you notice Billy Gunn was the one running to the ring like if his life was on the line and then Road Dog and X-Pac were just was a slow and running wreck right behind him. Billy Gunn. So that there got me questioning what the fuck is Billy Gunn on for him to be that active to be running and selling like that, you know? Alright, so apparently Roman Reigns fought Rusev on Xavier Woods YouTube channel, Up Up Down Down, which is a good channel, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I, I I watched some of it here and there, you know. But um Recently, uh, Roman Reigns fought Rusev on, on FIFA, right? Here's the, here's the problem. Rusev basically said, uh, Rusev beat Reigns, right? Oh, so I don't have that much time. I'm going to have to extend that real quick. Hold on. All right, there we go. I have to add like a couple more minutes. But yeah, Roman Reigns and Rusev were on Xavier Woods' channel, Austin Creed's channel, and then they fought in uh, FIFA, and Rusev beat Reigns, right? What this guy said was really retarded to me. He was like, you might as well, I might as well change my gamer tag to Roman Reigns because you can't beat me. Even though 
You've never beaten Roman Reigns in your fucking feud in the summer. From fucking July to fucking October, Rusev have never beaten Roman Reigns. And I'm, I remember everything. From the brawl at SummerSlam to Clash of Champions, Roman Reigns beat Rusev for the US title. And then Rusev challenged him the next night. Match ended in double disqualification, or double count, I should say. And then it, end, and then it, it escalated to Hell in the Cell. And then Roman Reigns beat Rusev Hell in the Cell. They've never, Rusev never beat Roman Reigns. So I don't know what, what's about bullshit. Uh, Rusev is spewing out of his fucking Bulgarian mouth. Fucking A. Okay, so... SmackDown got their final rating this past Tuesday. It, uh, was, uh, the, the final rating was at 1.88. Up from last week's 1.71. Uh, As noted before, Tuesday's show drew 2.6... Thirty-seven million viewers, up from last week's two point three hundred sixty-one million viewers. So, I guess. Oh, so they were like um one point eighty-eight up more than uh, last week. Okay, that's great. I want I want to see SmackDown succeed. I don't want SmackDown fail. You know. Okay, so apparently Seth Rollins is currently on vacation in Mexico, and he's taking Instagram photos with his new with his new girlfriend. Uh, name, his name, his girlfriend's name is Sarah, that apparently works at the Underground Chicago Nightclub, and is a friend of pro wrestler Scarlett Bordeaux, I, I don't fucking know, and then there's pictures, and, uh, yeah, uh, and, uh, <sighs> yeah, that's it, I guess, okay, uh, is that it, of important stuff, uh-huh, yeah, so, I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of my predictions of the Royal Rumble. Uh, I still don't see Reigns winning the Universal title. I'm just sorry, but that's just me. Anyways, uh, uh, and and whoever won the Royal Rumble, we'll have to, uh, I'll give you my predictions next month. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed today's 7 Days Podcast. If you can, leave a like on this video. Subscribe now for more. Follow me on Twitter, Apple, and what to do, Jim. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, and uh, Merry Christmas, I guess. And I'll see you guys next week for a new New Year's weekend. So I'm out. Later. We some southern boys with the promise strength. Ain't nobody man enough to feel the pain.